You know, viewer, innovation is important. It's what runs the human experience, experimentation and improvement, and while it's usually a good endeavor inherently, on the back end you really need to sit and examine if the experiment met good results. HAL Laboratory isn't a slouching developer, and we've already done this pony show earlier when we looked at Kirby's Tilt and Tumble, which was a late-stage Game Boy Color game controlled with tilting the handheld itself, with the gyroscope or the sensor that's actually in the cartridge. HAL used it in order to create a pinball platformer with some unique challenges and balanced platforming along with a couple of boss fights to round out the content. Of course, this being Kirby, it was the classic, space has gotten fucked up, and Kirby needs to slap DDD in order to fix it, storyline. Going safe on that one was probably the better play, since they were trying out an entirely new gameplay system and narrative still wasn't expected with GBC games. For the most part, it ended up working out. I had some fun time with the game, and it was a good popcorn title that you could fiddle with for three or so hours, and people generally do remember it pretty well, on the whole. Nowadays, Kirby has moved on, and alongside the acclaimed Kirby Air Ride, HAL also decided to flex on us with Canvas Curse, a side-scrolling pinball platformer that attempts a more expected Kirby title and mechanics. Canvas Curse begins much like Epic Yarn does in the future, clunkily establish some sort of reason for why the gameplay has completely changed in-universe. In Canvas Curse, Kirby is doing his usual thing, wasting his time eating food or running about with his friends until another Space Lord shows up and totally disincorporates Popstar and Kirby will have to use his powers to figure it all out. Just like in our last game, where the amazing mirror shattered Kirby into four separate Kirbys, exactly like not four swords for some arbitrary reason, cough cough, the canvas curse has removed Kirby's ability to move around unassisted since losing your arms and legs would do that sort of thing, so in order to facilitate saving the world, an unseen force has to draw rainbow lines into the world of Kirby to allow him to get anywhere and attack all the enemies. And is definitely the explanation for why you can see my cursor running around the screen right now. While I can appreciate the work that must have come from HAL in order to fulfill Nintendo's demand of gimmicky DS games that'll sell the hardware, or their inherent creative spirit to make something that only the DS's touchscreen could handle, this change was only for the detriment of what Kirby usually does. Yeah, they still have the vibrant world design, great soundtrack, enemy variety, and fun distracting mini-games, but the game's focus, platforming, and combat has been made all the worse with Canvas Curse. Since drawing on the fly when Kirby is in motion, or hell even flying through the air or swimming around, is an unpredictable science at the best of times. To be fair to Hal, the physics on Kirby himself and the drawing momentum is for the most part consistent and user-friendly, so they definitely got that part nailed down. Yet the consistency is running up against the touchpad's inherent inconsistencies and of course split-second gameplay decisions which it wasn't designed for. The combat is also fairly dumbed down in order to compensate for the inherent lack of control of Kirby himself since they'll slowly walk around and not many enemies on the roster will actively hunt down the fluff ball, which will allow him to go through the level kind of unimpeded only by the painter god's complete incompetence. A frequent traveling companion in Canvas Curse and bright neon sign from HAL that they knew this game was going to have issues was the stop posts, which are dotted lines littered throughout Canvas Land that'll stop Kirby dead in his tracks until the player is ready to propel him off the post to get to the next platforming challenge. And while it was definitely a good and necessary idea from HAL to put these things into the game to make it somewhat playable at well, it still shows that Canvas Curse is experimental at best, and it wasn't going to shape up to be the most satisfying experience and intuitive mechanics. The game got cut down quite a bit from the series' expectations, again to fit HAL's vision of this innovative title, which is why I'm even doing this video in the first place, instead of an LP, since after going through the footage, I found that surprisingly, by my definition, Canvas Curse has three boss fights in it. Cracko, other Cracko, and the final battle, which is hilariously overpowered, primarily due to Kirby's control problems, since it requires you to be in specific areas and predict the boss's movements in order to be in correct locations to avoid damage, plus large health pool and two phases, both of which have huge health pools. 
I know this is typical stuff for a final boss in this series, it's definitely completely normal, and to be honest, if it were any other game, this wouldn't actually be a complaint. But, in other Kirby games, you had the ability to float for quite long periods, proper movement controls, and copy abilities in order to supplement your ability to dish out defeats. Not in Canvas Land. In order to make the game not completely tedious, how obviously limited how many lines you can draw all at once, which makes sense in 95% of cases in Canvas Curse, since you aren't going to need a network of lines all over the place to create Rube Goldberg machines to get through any of these stages. It's just simple ramps and slanted lines, and that'll be fine in pretty much all cases. But in high-octane situations where you need to be on your toes every goddamn second, this'll become something to add to the pile of frustration pretty damn quickly, because you can't draw every line you need all simultaneously. Generally, Canvas Curse has well-thought-out level hazards and design decisions such as water levels and wind currents to put a spin on spinning Kirby about, and they can be a mixed bag. Especially in later areas, where levels will be defined by how many spikes we can put on everything to force the player into the gaming equivalent of surgery, but trying to complete while fumbling with a tiny tablet, and then the metaphor just completely falls apart. You'll have to figure out your own tolerance for what is an acceptable amount of bullshit from these gimmicks, smacking you about, but again, at least HAL is trying to follow through with the vision that they actually intended for Canvas Curse. But hey, get through all of that and you'll immediately hit the credits after you defeat Drossia. Kirby goes back to normal, having been able to chalk up another victory against another of those pesky space magician lords. Canvas Curse is an odd game to say the least, I mean that goes completely without saying at this point. Another opportunity for HAL to flex and try to build a different sort of game out of their backbone Kirby franchise. The problem was that unlike Tilt and Tumble, this experiment was a bigger flop than anything else. They tried, they put some spins on it, they really tried to make it work, fit some levels around it, and gave it their all, but at the end of the day, unless HAL wants to completely remake their platformer idea from the ground up, it just wasn't going to work out, since Kirby's platformers revolve around immediately reacting and moving with tighter control than a pinball platformer where you always have flimsy control of Kirby to the point that stop posts are littered throughout every level in this entire game. They tried to stick pinball Kirby in more or less an average Kirby game, and that had some gimmicks added to take advantage of Ball Kirby's idea, but that was the problem in of itself. This game is built like it's any other Kirby game, more or less, when in reality it required a page one overhaul to allow for this new gameplay mechanic to really shine. At the end of the day, it's simply in the wrong game. Tilt and Tumble worked a lot better since that game understood the limitations that not having direct control of Kirby in a platformer was going to have and turned that into more of a pinball game than a platformer, turning the game top down, updating the levels and obstacles, and changing their idea for boss challenges. Canvas Curse didn't do that, and so it just lost a whole bunch of its innovation potential on its awkward presentation. If HAL wants to try and make this sort of game in the future, then they're gonna have to go with the remake everything path for a possible sequel. If you want to make something completely different, then the whole thing has to be recreated. Otherwise, we're just gonna be seeing a repeat of the flimsy controls, irritating platforming, and enemy pitfalls that made Canvas Curse an unfortunate chore. This could definitely work if it had the right vision to it, but it's not going to work for an average Kirby game, because it's not average. It's completely different, it's brand new, and if they want to do that, then go whole hog, and I hope that it works out for you, because this is just not the right path forward.